First, respect. If we adults showed more respect to young people, would they show more respect to us? Uh, today, David Cameron is expected to climb on the respect bandwagon and urge young people to respect law and order, respect authority. And he's not the first to climb on the respect bandwagon. Uh, George Galloway named his anti-war political party Respect. And, of course, Tony Blair last year promised to create a culture of respect. Now, if we go back to earlier in the week, we heard that Dutch kids have the happiest childhoods in the Western world, according to a UN report. Why? Well, apparently, the fundamental to this is that adults respect children. They listen to and value their opinions, although some Dutch adults actually feel too much respect is shown to kids because they, too, do have problems with binge drinking amongst the young. British kids, on the other hand, have the most miserable childhoods in the West. All we keep hearing is how they must learn to respect their elders, learn to respect law and order, their parents... And maybe this is where we're going wrong. Maybe we should be showing young people more respect if we want to get some back. Uh, the government-backed Family and Parenting Institute thinks we should. Young people are too often treated as a nuisance, it says. Uh, the National Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children agrees. Kids are demonised by the media as ill-educated jobs. 98% of young people feel that way. 98%. Not every youth carries a gun, though, do they? So a real chicken and an egg dilemma. Are the likes of David Cameron and Tony Blair wrong to keep demanding respect from the youths? Maybe we should be showing the youths some respect first, Larry. Well, um, after the end of my first marriage, I had, um, we had family therapy because of the issues to do with the children. And one of the things a psychologist told me was that I should respect the individuality of my children. So that I should actually think of them as separate people with different qualities to my own. Stop expecting them to turn into me because they're yeah. not going to. Now, I remember telling somebody else this and they roared with laughter. I thought this was a hilarious idea. Because there, is a, there are a lot of people who think, well, if, if you actually say please and thank you to your children, like I do, unless I'm really angry, but mm -hmm. you know, I try to, then they're just going to run riot. And there is a big feeling about parents today, they let their kids have anything they have, yeah. and this is why we're all going to the dogs. The problem with children was, it's, it's, a very, it's a very difficult line to draw, because on the one hand, if you respect their opinions, and they say, Mum, I want a TV in my bedroom, and I'm going to stay up to one in the morning, at some point, as a parent, you have to say, no, you're not, because you're going to school. Yes. So in, you are not respecting their opinions. But having said that, I think everybody wants to be listened to. I think if all of us thought back to our own childhood, what is the thing that we felt most upset about is the fact that we didn't think people were listening to us. And I think that's what your job it, as a parent it, is, among other things. Isn't that part and parcel of... I mean, 98% of kids uh, feel that, you know, we, we, the media views them as a nuisance, has a negative image of them, but that's what teenagers think generally, is I mean, you can go back to the 1950s and think about teddy boys and things, and, and, and teenagers for many, many years have had a bit of an image problem. Yeah. But there's no doubt that the, the, the image of young people over the last 10 years but we have demonised them. I and mean, when I see a group of kids on the street on bikes, and I'm not thinking that, that you know, oh, they're probably reading the Beano to each other, and isn't it lovely? I'm thinking, whose mobile phone have they nicked? You know, there is an image now for young people th that they are all up to no good. So, and that's so really you're sad. supposed to. Uh, I don't quite understand. I'm genuinely confused as to how we are supposed to show respect to young people who I think, genuinely I don't intimidate think, us. I don't think that... I, I, but some of those kids, I think, have gone past the point now. I think you could, with my own children, I don't think that I... And I often say to them, would you show me some respect, please? Because if you don't show me respect, I'm not going to show you okay. respect. It works both ways. So you're saying aim young? I think you have to start with your own. I can't take on everybody else's kids as well. No. I can only do my own. And, and I think my parents listen to my opinions, which is why I have so many, of course. <laughs> what a nightmare that must have been. Well, well, I funny enough, I could say the same thing, actually, about myself and And I thought and that parents. was normal for yeah. a child's opinions to be listened to. A lot of people don't listen to okay. kids. Okay. Uh, John, respect. Which uh, way does it flow in your house? Well, I, I find it incredible that actually even asking the question. Because I, you know, I've got four children and I listen to what they say and we have a, we have a, a banter between each other. You know, there is a, a level in way of hierarchy. We do respect each other and, we, and we, their own space and all sorts of things. But I think it all comes back to the word community. You know, the, the, it's actually about the whole thing about community breaking down, isn't it? We don't have community. You talked before about, you know, Asian community. You talked about the Chinese community. These are communities within, you know, who hold each other together. And there are sort of pecking orders and there are levels and there's things that go on. It, it, for me in my own home, it's quite different. I'm probably not as cynical as, as Larry about, you know, the group of boys on the bike. But I am intimidated walking down the street sometimes. And how am I supposed to sit there and go, you know, I say good morning and they go, whatever. Yeah. You know, and you go, well... 
You know, but it's interesting, isn't it, that it, within gang culture, and we think about Billy Cox and these other guys that have died. Within gang culture, it's all about respect. If if somebody, if one of their young, if one of their young bloods disses, disrespects the other, there's trouble. So respect. Maybe if they had more respect from the people around them and their communities, they wouldn't look for respect within a load of uh, of thugs and criminals well, and I, gangsters. I mean, I've got I've got sometimes got some issues as well with work, and I've got I had a, a group of people who were, who were cleaning my restaurant at night time, who were using my mobile telephone and spending huge amounts of money on the phone. 800 quid a month I was spending. And when I questioned them, they said, you're not respecting me. I said, what do you mean I'm not respecting you? You're not respecting me because you're asking me if I'm using your telephone. Well, you were using my telephone. There's a camera footage. You were using the telephone. That, that's not about respect at all. And that's where the word's right. being disused. I'm with, I'm with you. I'm going to take some calls, come back to us in a sec. Karen?